Hello, I'm Richard Hunter, Head of Markets, and welcome to our look ahead for the week commencing the 23rd of January. Much of the early pep from 2023 has been slightly taken away as recessionary fears have resurfaced in the States. Federal Reserve very much sticking to their guns that they will continue to raise interest rates with an expected terminal rate of around 5% and the possibility that rates may stay there for some time. This comes against some fairly mixed economic data in the States showing that uh, some of the interest rate rises so far have had an impact, although the labour market does remain something of a thorn in the side with its own resilience. At the same time, it's been a fairly tepid opening to the fourth quarter reporting season, so clearly investors are still uh, very much looking out for what the latest is on the ground from the companies reporting, and the banks in particular have had a mixed uh, start. Set against all that, the fact that China is now reopening and its economy uh, should be receiving a boost is uh, an early positive in terms of Asian markets, but in terms of the global picture, it's very much around mixed messages. So, in the year to date, the Dow Jones has now given up those early gains. It's down by 0.3%, but the S&P 500 is still in positive territory, up 1.6%, NASDAQ up 3.7%, and the FTSE 100 continues to fly the flag, up by 4.4% in the year to date. Turning to next week, there are three companies to keep a particular eye out for, two of which have had a fairly turbulent time of late. We're going to have some uh, first quarter updates from Associated British Foods, where of course all eyes will be on its Primark arm. Shares uh, around 10.5% down over the last year, although over the last three months they have popped by 37%. So of late there's been a lot of expectation that Primark in particular could have had a good Christmas. And what we did see, of course, uh, for the December season as a whole, is the propensity of consumers to return to physical shopping as opposed to online, given the postal strikes in the background. Last time we heard from um, AB Foods back in December, they were basically saying that they were expecting significant sales growth, but on the other hand, adjusted operating profit was likely to be down given an increase in input cost inflation. Another turbulent ride also, Q1 numbers due from EasyJet, uh, despite the fact that the shares are up by 34% over the last three months. Over the last year, the shares are down 32%. And of course, we've got the two factors playing against uh, each other here. On the one hand, is there pent up demand or on the other hand, is consumer caution getting the upper hand there? So look out for the usual figures from uh, airlines, their current load factor, their revenue per seat, and also, of course, ancillary revenues, such as where you can book your own particular seat, um, have given us something of a boost to earnings. Finally, Diageo half-year numbers due, shares down about 2% over the last year, which is quite a disappointing performance. Diageo, of course, has a number of world-famous brands, ranging from Guinness to Baileys to Captain Morgan Rum to Smirnoff, and those higher-end products do tend to bring with them their own pricing power, which kind of um, makes Diageo something of an inf inflation-proof stock. So, as I say, it's uh, been quite a disappointing performance in relative terms over the last year. However, they are still powered by um, much expansion on the Asian side of things. They've got geographical diversification and, of course, the very fact that um, they've got such a broad um, pro product range is something which tends to result in quarter-on-quarter quarter and year-on-year improvements. Thank you for watching. Have a great week.